Welcome to the presentation on making a hidden picture game. Okay, so in this uh, presentation you'll be introduced to using triggers to initiate animation uh, and uh, make a fun kind of game for kids. Uh, so here's an example of the kind of game I'm talking about. The idea is I'd stand in front of the class and uh, I'd say, okay, ask a random question. So I teach physics, I might ask them, what does the area under a velocity time graph tell me? Uh, puts, kids put their hands up, and if they get the answer correct, then they remove a tile. So by clicking on this, I can remove a tile. And they get to have a guess at what's behind the picture. So from this you can see uh, they can't guess that much. I ask another question, and I know, let's imagine we're in a geography class, what's the capital of France? And the kid answers Paris. Okay, right, so you get to remove um, sli uh, panel number two. Okay, and... Um, they still probably can't guess it, and basically this gives kids a chance to, it encourages them to uh, take part, it's a little bit of fun, and, uh, uh, but more, more to the point really, it doesn't matter whether you think you'd find this presentation useful or not, or whether you'd use this, the point is, is that I'm using this as an example of how we use triggers to, to um, start animations, so um, even if you don't feel that you'd like to use this particular method in your teaching, or this uh, type of game, then you probably would find the uh, using triggers in um, PowerPoint useful. So anyway, as an example of this game, we just continue going through in order, and the kids have to guess, and it's, they start to get excited, and now, all right, I think they maybe will be able to get it by this point, and the last two reveals a hot dog. If a kid managed to say hot dog immediately, then you'd reveal the picture and congratulate that kid, and be pretty a bit annoyed that you've wasted all that work in making this PowerPoint slide. But let's have a look at how to, uh, how to make that. So I've just pressed escape to get out of the presentation. I'm going to press control M, control and M at the same time on my keyboard to make a new slide. I'm going to select these two and delete them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a picture into the background. The person who showed me this game actually, they used uh, pictures of celebrities. So I'm right clicking on the uh, slide and uh, I'm going to format background and I want to select from here the fill to be a picture or texture fill. And then I can go insert from file and find a picture from my own uh my own uh pictures. I think I've got quite a funny picture here, that's a good one. Uh probably not uh, appropriate for your younger kids, but uh older, more mature students may find this quite funny. And that's it. It's just going to. I don't want to apply it to every pic, every slide. I just want to apply it to the slide I'm working on at the moment. So I'll just close it now. So now this is a background picture. I can't move it or change it or anything, and it makes it a lot easier to make the next steps. Right. So now I want to go about and cover this up with some um, shapes. So I'm going to go to insert. Or where I'm going to go? <laughs> Home. Here we are. Uh, from the home page, there we are, I'll use these, I'll just use rectangular shapes, it's easier. And uh, to start with, I'm just going to cover up a little bit of this. And I'm going to make my um, first animated rectangle, uh, and then I'll be able to copy and paste that, and it will copy all the animations and everything, the settings I set up for it over, so I don't have to redo it for every single box. So the first thing I want to do is go to animations and click custom animations and that opens up the custom animation box in the right hand side okay now I've got the box selected so now I'm going to choose an exit I'll choose any random uh, exit diamond that's nice I'm also actually this time going to add noises go into effect options so I'm using this uh, drop down menu here I'm going to effect options and um, enhancements here and you can choose sounds from PowerPoint's own sounds so here I'm going to choose uh, applause I can also set the volume on this you may want to set the volume a bit lower because uh, if you've got good speakers in your classroom it can get quite annoying when every time you press a button you get a very loud noise so I'm just going to reduce the sound a little bit there reduce the volume sorry okay so now when this disappears it makes a bit of a noise as well okay which is good for keeping eyes on the board. Right, um, so now I want to make this happen when I click on it. So 
I go to effect options again and timing and triggers down here so I select triggers I select the link to say start effect at click of on click of okay and there's only one rectangle in here rectangle number three rectangle number three so I'll just click on that one I could have chosen from others but I'm going to choose that rectangle okay rectangle three okay right let's test it so I'm going to run the slideshow from the slide I'm on which I can do from down here now when I click on that it disappears and I get a little round of applause great that's what I'm aiming for so now I can just copy this several times copy I'm just going to continue pasting it in fact just as a shortcut I'll use control V a couple of times and now I'll start blocking out uh, the picture in a I mean I can try and do it in a creative way so that uh, um, it adds to the humor or the fun of the slide okay so they'll never guess what they wouldn't know what Godzilla was probably okay so just do it like this so now I'm just covering up the picture if you were doing this with uh, a particularly nice one I, I've used with children before a friend of mine made the PowerPoint was um, celebrity couples and uh, he'd covered the, the couples up in such a way that uh, it was quite it was difficult to work it out he put an order in which you should get rid of the slides so it was quite challenging and uh, that really got the kids engaged but unfortunately I don't I'm not really that well acquainted with uh, all the celebrities so I wouldn't be able to do it as well as he did okay so now I've covered this up in a way I think will be quite uh, amusing okay I'm going to start with numbering them so just selecting the, the box put a number on it number one number two three four five and I suppose six the punchline is when you can read the text okay I've moved that one back so I'll just move it back right that, the text is a bit small so I'm gonna holding down the shift key I can select all the boxes at the same time go back to home and make the text larger okay now as well it's a bit boring to have it all blue so why not change some of the colors I'm going to again just select one block and then using the shift key held down select another block now I've removed my hand from the shift key right clicking on this I'm going to go into format object and I'm going to change the background color to something a bit more lively and do the same for some of the others different color this time let's go for that green a bit sickly maybe go for something a bit darker purple okay still not looking that great okay and we'll make this last one uh, red well that'll do okay so now you can see one two three four five six and then I can ask six questions and it just you know makes a, a bit of an engaging fun game as you can see when I copied all these things over all the animations got copied over also so let's try running this. So I ask the kids a question, you know, uh, uh, what have you learnt this lesson? Someone give me a good answer, and they give me the answer, and if it's acceptable, I remove the first one, and we uh, ask another question, or I, maybe I could even say to the students, okay, it's you have to come up with a good question, and someone else has to answer it. There are many, you can be imaginative in many different ways, and as I click through these, you get to see more and more of the picture revealed. and finally we get the, the punchline okay uh, so you don't have to use triggers just for this type of thing you can choose triggers for lots of different kinds of things and uh, be very imaginative in fact uh, you can make games uh, like racing games even using triggers uh, but that's a bit complicated maybe for this uh, for this uh, presentation but just as one final example let's imagine I have this thing this circle animated to do something let's give it a motion path uh, draw custom motion path and I'm going to do it as a scribble so I want this to go in a circle like this okay so when clicked that sphere is going to follow that path for some reason that moved then okay it will follow that path when I press the click okay but now I don't want it to happen when I click I want it to happen when I click on this rectangle so now what's this rectangle called? It's going to be the only rectangle on the slide. So now I'm going to make it so that the effect happens. 
by going to triggers, the effect happens when rectangle 3 is clicked, which is that rectangle on that slide. Okay, so let's go back in. Now, when I mouse over the rectangle, I should get the clicker. I click on that, and then something happens. So maybe that doesn't seem like a good example, but if you use your imagination, you can apply these things to hundreds of different ideas. Okay, I hope this was useful. It was only intended to teach you how to use triggers and uh, demonstrate one kind of classroom game. Uh, if you have any, um, any useful feedback or any ideas for other presentations, please make a comment on the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.